Hey, 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 it's showtime. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, folks? This is Kevon Thurman, your host for Food for Thought. I'm excited to be here today. Let me tell you, I have Chef Cutie Pie. If you haven't heard of her today, you will know exactly who I'm talking about. We're just out here in the kitchen. We're about to cook something that I can't pronounce. But what I will tell you is that my mom used to make me this my favorite meal when I was young. And I'm going to go ahead and let some of you guys in because uh, I realized that uh, some of you guys can't see us until I make today public. So know this. My mom used to make me a really dope meal when I was younger. And when I was sick, uh, she would make something really simple, yet uh, it helped me in, uh, in more ways than one. So what she would make was chicken and rice, stew chicken and rice. And she would add her little flavor to it. And it was just dope, man. And to this day, my mom can make stew chicken and rice, and it just makes me feel better. So when I linked up with this chef, right, she basically said, well, what's your favorite meal? You know, talk to me. How can I how can I help? And I said, okay, well, why don't we do a different variation of stew chicken and rice? So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Stay tuned, because the next voice you'll hear is that of Chef Cutie Pie. excited today. Me too. I'm me really too. Listen, And you were so, so lucky we jump... I haven't done this on my lives yet. Oh, I'm, so, I'm the first. The first Let's one go. that ever gets this recipe. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, you know it's my favorite. Just You're going to help us Latinize it. But before we get started, uh, welcome mm -hmm. to Food for Thought. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and for inviting me today. I'm really excited to hopefully match the favoriteness of your dish <laughs> and maybe give you a new spin on it where you have it when you're not just sick, you know? I'm excited. So look, we're going to jump right in there, but first and foremost, tell the folks who you are. I refer to you as Chef Cutie Pie, but you do have a name. And I'm going to put my rice on. It's take a long yes, time. my name is Veronica. Okay. Um, my name is Veronica. Um, I started Chef Cutie Pie six years ago. And I, it actually started as Cutie Pie Party Planning. And I also ran a blog called Puerto Rican Roots Blog. So I kind of merged the two and was like, you know what? I love cooking. Um, and Puerto Rican Roots Blog came about because my aunt had passed away. And my aunt lived in Puerto Rico. And every year for the holidays, she would send us this goodie box mm -hmm. of all the good stuff. So like it was rice pudding, it was bread pudding, it was pasteles, sofrito, herbs. Like I'm like, so who's sending us this box now? Like I need to figure out how to do this. So, um, you know, I, I asked different family members, look up 20 recipes, give it my own spin. And that's how we're here. And my, my slogan is your abuelita got younger. Your grandmother got younger because Food is culture. I ask you what your favorite thing was. Like when you sit there and like you think of your favorite dish, it should give you that warm feeling in your belly. It should make you dance in your seat. So that's what oh, yeah. I want to share with everyone. That's awesome. So I definitely read that and I had to look at my wife and I said, um, 
not sure what this word is. So she basically interpreted the entire menu to me. Uh, because that's just how dope she is. Yeah. She's uh <laughs> best man she happens to actually know. Her. So um all right, so where do we start? So um I think we both put on our rice. So for everybody following uh uh Boyogi Sal is like a stewed chicken. So it is gonna have a lot of broth. It's typically served with white rice. So for white rice, I just use two cups of rice, four cups of water. And I say cups, but you know, I don't think people really measure in their kitchen. So if you use this little jar, put four of these and four of the same things of water. Um, a little bit of oil, salt, pepper, to jazz it up, sometimes I put in oregano, um, garlic, just to give it a little extra flavor. And I, I put everything in together and cover it on high. And okay. then once it boils, I'll stir it and lower it to two. Oh, I do it a little opposite, but I'm, okay. I'm still, I'm gonna catch up. You boil your water first. So this is my foolproof way to make sure that it's not soggy. Ah, okay, okay, okay. But because no as freeze. Puerto Rican as I am, I still mess up rice. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, so rice is kind of boiled, but we're going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes, let the water soak, soak it up. Like the oregano, that's, that's good, too. Yep. They call me oregano, babe. Okay. You the last. I love oregano. Oregano and garlic, to me, go in, like, everything but dessert. Awesome. So I'm good on that. So in the right. pot for the chicken, were you able to find sofrito, sazon, and adobo? Yes. I had sofrito. I do. So tell me, tell the viewers actually what sofrito is. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What is sofrito? Can you break it down? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. No? I think it might be on your side. Hey, can you hear? Can you all hear us? I think you might be muted. Right. Uh, I think I'm good. All right, so the viewers said that they can hear us. Hey, I jazzed up the right. I can't hear you. We can all hear you. Should I get off and get back on? Come on. Yeah. All right. So before she got off, right? We were talking about this uh this deliciousness, right? So we so um to be honest, I never heard of it, but we got it. We're gonna make it happen and she's gonna jump back in. Uh and hopefully she can hear us. Can you hear got us? Got it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Explain to know what sofrito is because we'll talk later about this whole Goya situation, right? Yes. And I, I you know, we tried to find some alternatives, but we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> no, in Georgia, it's hard. So I do make my own spices now. So I have in the pot for the chicken, I'm just putting one spoon of the sofrito. If okay. you have how, to big pot be? Huh? How, how big should my pot be? Should my chicken be in there already? No, 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 no chicken. I just put a little bit of oil. It should be big enough for like, how much chicken do you have? Yeah, that's oh, it's, good. It's five of us. So you probably need a bigger pot. <laughs> how many pieces per person do you have? They all the same. I got a bigger pot. Yeah. How about I cook all the chicken? I'm gonna cook six pieces. Okay, so my pot is, I only have four because it's only me and my son. So I have a pot big enough. So Chef, four tell us a little bit about your family, okay. about your background. So both of my parents have been together for like almost 50 years. Um, they yeah. retired and yeah, like my oldest sister, is 10 years older than me and you know women shouldn't tell their age but you know she's 46 <laughs> i'm 36 
Okay. And my parents have been together, you know, the whole time. So I have two sisters. And I know in one of your podcasts, you said, um, or one of your guests said that like all his daughters are different. And it's so funny because my dad had all girls. We're all completely different. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm the one that cooks. We have one in fashion and one that's a lawyer. So we're all very different. Awesome. Um, can you cut? So I, can, I can catch up with you. I'm just slicing onions. I like onion slices. If you don't like onions, then I suggest dicing it so that they dissolve. Because okay, my wife doesn't eat onions, but we do. Okay. And it's, it's all about the flavor. So I know a lot of people don't eat onions like when you slice them, but they they don't notice when it dissolves in there. Okay. So um, my parents were- right? mm -hmm. as, we're, as, we're, as we're talking, and I know you're gonna get, you gotta finish telling me a little bit about who you are, but you gotta make sure you give me some Spanish words. Okay. So onion is, is um, I was gonna say zanahoria because I was looking at the carrots. So zanahoria is carrots. Zanahoria. Yes. That's probably yeah. a very difficult word. But we're okay. making rice. Rice is arroz. Okay. And as we're cutting things up, we're throwing them in the pot, correct? Yes. Because right now we want to draw out all the flavor. We, it's not on high yet. So I have my stove on six. With a little bit of oil, and I just put the sofrito and the onion. Sofrito. Yes. So if you have store bought, you can use like three tablespoons to equal one of a fresh sofrito. Three tablespoons. Yeah, I need that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, need all that flavor. So here's a question for you. Um, you said mom and dad have been together for 50 years, and you said only three tablespoons, correct? And only what? Three tablespoons? Yes, three tablespoons. Okay, cool. And so, siblings again? I have two older sisters. Okay. Yeah. Two older so sisters. I How old is your son? My son is 17. 17. And this is the crazy thing. We all have boys. We all have boys. All of you guys have boys. Yes. So we have, my son is the oldest. I have a nephew. I have two nephews. Um, 17 and 8. I'm sorry, not 17, 13 and 8. Um, and then the youngest nephew was born only an hour after the 8-year-old. So he's also 8. Okay. All right, so if you're just tuning in, I'm with Chef Cutie Pie, Veronica Velez, otherwise known as Veronica Velez. Um, she is dope, and she is originally from New York, folks. And now she's uh, not only recently, but she's migrated to Atlanta. So one of the questions I'm going to have for her next is, how different is Atlanta from New York? <laughs> My son. <laughs> um, oh, your son? How old is it? How old is the boy? Yeah. 17. They calling you back over here. <laughs> yeah, come over here. Yo, man, what's up? How are you? He said, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Is it the, uh, he going to give me the drop. Good. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> He's going back upstairs. Um, so before the onions burn, I want us to season the chicken real quick. Okay. So I love sofrito. I put it in everything because it has garlic, it has oregano, it has onions. So I'm putting some sofrito in the chicken. How much? Um, again, whatever you feel like. Nah. Like three tablespoons is good too. I'm good. I got you. Or you can even do four because you have those six pieces of chicken. I have four pieces and I use like two tablespoons. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh go crazy with it. Yeah. 
because and I like to season it heavily because we're gonna add a lot of water later and we'll season okay. again, but you can't over season this dish. Okay, a couple questions for you. Mm hmm Because my mom's gonna ask who watched the who watched the chicken. She always asks who watched the chicken. Do you watch the meat? <laughs> Yes, and it's funny you say that because I was watching it before I got on the phone with you because I didn't want to stand in front of the camera. And mm -hmm. my friend is like, you know, you got to tell people to wash chicken because not everybody knows that they need to wash chicken. <laughs> but I do. I, I rinse it. I, and, hmm? I got some friends that don't wash the meat. That can go either way. I don't eat their food either. No, that was a clean joke. <laughs> so, um, wait. So we're, that's what we're doing. Are we putting um, seasoning on and everything? Yes. So I put the sofrito. Did you get sazon? Did I get sazon? I can get yours. Okay. But in okay. honor of I you. I know. I need to drop some off to you guys. I just need to know how much. But I guess it's up to me, right? So do you have the packets of sazon? Yes. Okay. So I would say two for the whole dish. So you can put one on the chicken now and one in the water later. Yeah, I'll I'll measure as best as I can. Yeah, only because sazon is really salty and it has um, MSG. So we don't want to kill people with high blood pressure, you know? So this is why I tell people season as you go. We'll say a prayer. <laughs> um, and if you have adobo, I would put some adobo. Do we? I'm not going to tell you what brand if it is. If you don't, then it's fine. If you don't, then use garlic powder, oregano. Again, I put those two things in everything. Um, I don't usually use salt because when you're using sofrito, it brings out the flavors. Onions, peppers, all fresh herbs bring out a lot more flavor. So it lessens your need for salt. Um, got, it, got it. So I put adobo, sazon, and the sofrito. We're gonna put them skin down yeah, this um, is in the pan. Yeah, Give a little a bit. Uh -huh. So how different is NYC from Atlanta? Did you answer that for me already? No, I didn't. So New York is a big city with small circles, right? So right. like a lot of times, if your friends are Caribbean, you know a whole bunch of Caribbeans, everybody knows everybody, all Puerto Ricans know each other, it's like that. Atlanta like wants to be a big city, but when I got here, first of all, I didn't drive in New York, so I had to learn how to drive in Atlanta. Okay. But, um, but when I started driving, I'm like, why does everybody say Atlanta's so big? Because I was going from where, like, you know, from the airport to Buckhead in like 30 minutes. I'm like, you realize if I was in New York to get from Brooklyn to Yankee Stadium was two hours. And granted, yes, it's on the train and all that. But um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I love Atlanta. It's a lot more convenient. There's a lot more opportunities. Um, rent is cheaper, kind of, now, sort of. <laughs> Cool, because you're joining us on your cutie pie, and we are making, can you pronounce that again? Pollo de sal, which is a Puerto Rican stewed chicken. All right, I think my wife is, uh, is definitely like almost done. Cool. So we season the chicken with sofrito, adobo, sazon. If you like cayenne pepper, you want to add a little kick to it, you can do that now also. Um, and then they're going skin side down in your pot. Oh, skin side. Yeah. So this is a trick that I've learned over the years from a lot of Jamaicans that make stewed chicken. This mm -hmm. is what gives it more color. So we're browning it a little bit. If you have browning, you could throw a little bit of brown in on the chicken. Again, okay. browning is salty. We're going to use the sazon. I don't want to over salt everything. All right. So uh, it's it skin down, the onion, the, the oil, mm -hmm. the rice is. Uh, 
I'm just washing my hands here. And um, we can peel our potatoes, switch cutting boards. Um, I bought three. I like potatoes. If how many do you do you like potatoes? I have four. We love potatoes. It makes the, the food stretch okay. a little bit. Yes. So um I have three because what I like to do is I put one in in the beginning so that it can um dissolve and it'll thicken it up. So we don't have to use like a starch or flour or anything like that. All right, so how are you cutting? I'm just peeling it and cutting them into big cubes. So tell me something. I want to know more about this notion of Latin X. I don't think I've ever heard of it. I've heard of Latino and mm -hmm. uh, Hispanic and the whole nine. I want to get some view on Latina, Hispanic, you know, so on and so forth. And, what, you know, is there a difference? Um, but I really want to know about Latin X and what that means. Okay, so Latinx is a term used to not gender conform anyone. Um, okay. So Spanish is one of the Romance languages that, you know, Italian, French, all of those have masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. And it was just a term that was that people came up with to um, address mainly the LGBT community, but also everyone started using it because Latin culture is a very macho culture. It has a lot of machismo. So to start getting rid of that, we started using Latin X. Okay. And quick question, are we throwing the potatoes in? One potato, not yet, but set one aside for after we brown the chicken a little bit. Okay, so one potato goes in. After the chicken browns on both sides. Were you yeah. able to do both sides yet? Okay. Not yet. Um, and as far as like Latina, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, I, mm -hmm. if someone were to say, what are you? I say I'm Puerto Rican first or Latina. Um, Hispanic was a word created for the census. So it's kind of like African-American, like it's not wrong. Nobody cares which one you use, <laughs> but it's like, if your friends ask you, I'm pretty sure you're just like, yeah, I'm black, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dropping potatoes. It's all good. My wife making all types of grunts, like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Now, who typically cooks in your household? Right, who typically cooks? Who like they cook? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, um, cooking. it really just depends. So, I'm not the type of guy that will, so if my wife is home late or asleep or not feeling well or whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. and I'm not waiting to eat. So I can cook. I think we, mm -hmm. we have our favorite meals. Uh, I'm like a beast at breakfast. That's what I do. You know what I mean? But um, mm -hmm. yeah, she does cook and she cooks very well. I told her most of what she knows, okay. though. That's cool. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I saw the video with your son where he called out who cooks the best. So ah, yeah, I, I heard like, him say Nana beats out both of y'all. So. Hey, <laughs> can burn like <laughs> i mean if you don't think about it i grew up you know eating her food and yeah i ain't skinny I say that much. now i also saw that you went to haiti are you guys haitian no so okay at all so i'll tell you a story about that one day i was scrolling on my id and i saw i was on a homeboy here went to haiti and it was just something that I really, really uh, I loved it, the, the optics of it all. So I asked him where he went in the rest of history. I've been going every year. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. I love going to places that are really rich in culture. You know, like I don't, 
like going, I don't want to go somewhere and not be able to go where the locals go or hang out where the locals hang out. Like the whole point of traveling to me is to learn. So have you been a lot of places? Have I been where? A lot of places. No, actually, um, you know, I've been doing the single mom thing since I was 19. I went back to school when my son was four. So that's really been my full-time job. So next summer, he's 18. I said, don't even look at me after June 10th because it's hot mama summertime. And <laughs> I am ready. But, um, you know, we go to Puerto Rico almost every year. We try to go, especially now that my parents live there. How's your chicken looking? It's looking good. It's, uh, I don't know how good it's supposed to be. So I'm just okay. right Have you put the let, me, let me show you this one. So this is like a golden brown. Uh, okay. Yeah, I might have too much salt in mine. I think I went crazy, remember? That's fine. So mine is just like a golden brown. Some of them are a little bit darker than this, and it's OK. Because remember, you're just searing the outside, so changes are inside is still raw, which is fine. So I flip mine over, so I'm going to add my one potato. Yeah, I think I'm going to give mine about five more minutes. OK. I'm doing some more onions on top, just because. So let me ask you a question. Let's talk about Goya. Gonna... Mm -hmm. Talk yeah. about Goya. You know, the CEO made some comments, and I'm just curious how you feel about that. Does it does it disrupt how you shop? And if so, how are you transitioning in the world? So once, so my mom, you know, survived cancer. So she has high blood pressure. She has diabetes. She had strokes, she had heart surgery. So all of these things that were going on in my life, you know, seven, eight years ago, made me realize more about food. Because especially in Hispanic culture, we eat a lot of starch, we eat a lot of potatoes. We eat all of these things that break down in an unhealthy way. So what I myself was just to start making healthier food, start preparing things more at home. Like sofrito was one of the first things that I taught myself how to make. So when this came out about Goya, it was like, it, for me, it wasn't so much about the political aspect, although I don't believe any public company should ever affiliate itself politically. So I think okay. that's where that was wrong. But I was like, you know what? People needed to give up Goya a long time ago. So I was happy. I was like, now this is... And so I saw the time to shine to mm -hmm. Wait, the other brands. Yeah, I mean, so I want to talk about that. No, it's, it's giving the time to shine to 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 brands. Yeah, talk about the branding. And actually, I had so I had never made Sasong and Adobo until recently because after this thing with Goya happened, I was like, you know, let me reach out to people that make song and adobo i reached out to a bunch of people no one replied and i was like you know what this isn't that hard like let me play around in the kitchen for a few days and i can put my own thing out there and that's exactly what i did and you know my skin is browning it was by the way that happened very quickly it was yes it was something that happened very quickly and it was literally overnight so okay. people were successful like in new york there's a restaurant freaking Rican. He sold out in minutes. Loisaida, she sold out in minutes. Or he, I think it's a man that owns that company. It's, um, you know, it's, 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 people need to realize that just because they never tried it before doesn't mean that it's not good. Right. So now that we're using all of these alternatives to Goya that do not have MSG, that have fresh herbs, that have, fresh spices, I feel is really going to make a healthy change in our community. How important is that to you? It's very important to me. Like, you know, I'm a big girl. I'm six feet. I've always been heavy. I've never been skinny, never wanted to be skinny. 
Um, okay. But after my mom was sick, I became vegetarian. I was eating a lot of fruits, vegetables, and sometimes I was eating fish. I lost 90 pounds. So it was like, look at what I was eating before and what I'm eating now and how much it changed. Like, yeah, I started working out after I realized I lost 40 pounds, but it wasn't an intentional thing. I just saw the change and felt the change in my, my body. Nice, nice, nice. So talk about your brand and I just don't want to gloss over it. Um, it. Are you using your products? Can you show mm -hmm. them? Yes. So, um, these launched at the end of July. This is a four ounce sofrito. It comes in four ounces and eight ounces. Um, sofrito, again, it has cilantro, it has garlic, onions, peppers, and olive oil, water, depending on the consistency of it. Sazon is traditionally what everyone has used as a seasoning that's salty and makes things orange. That's really all Sazon ever does. That's adobo doesn't. So, orange. so it got a little trump in it, huh? Right. Yeah, so Sasong is also what makes um, arroz con gandules yellow, if you've ever had that. Wait, it's I'm sorry. The Sasong in it. So what that is, mm -hmm. arroz just... con gandules. I know The Sasong. Hmm? Oh, I can go... say achote. Achote. Yes, achote. It's a seed and it's orange. So it's basically like a food coloring. It's only used for the color. Okay. Um, adobo is another seasoning that I make that's available on my website. The website is www.chefcutiepie.com. Adobo is more of the flavor cousin and it's a little yellow. Got it. Okay. So these are the three things. And yeah, on my lives, I just started cooking with my stuff. That's good stuff. I'm like, you know, until somebody comes and pays us, <laughs> like, I'm not showing your brand. <laughs> listen, listen, I hear you. I hear you. And and honestly, I think a lot of us should start taking the bull by the horn and doing our own thing because we're more than capable and more than talented, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I always wanted to just do yeah, a show. Absolutely. Whether it, yeah, whether it's successful or not, whether people tune in or not, mm -hmm. it's something that I want to do. I think I know a lot of dope people. Uh, I've, I've come in contact with some amazing souls. So I'm like, hey, I, I can create my own platform. I can tell you some stories about the people that I reached out to and the people that didn't reach back. But at some point, you just got to do it. Right. You so what do we, exactly. what do we do with carrots? So um, is your chicken brown on both sides? Uh, yeah. You say that. Okay. So now cover it with water. How much so water? like half an inch, half an inch above the chicken. Okay. Because it's going to boil and evaporate up until right when it covers the chicken. And that's where we want it. And so the carrots, are we using them or no? So my water is already boiling. When your water boils, we can put in the carrots and the okay. rest of the potatoes. Got it, got it. So I'm behind so, the eight ball. I got baby carrots because they're easier. You don't need to peel them. You don't need to chop them up. I just throw them in there. Got it. And again, the carrots are going to break down. So if you want to just put half now and put half later, you can do that. I like my carrots really soft. Okay, so it slows the cooking down when you put the water in, right? Yes. So I might need to put a little bit more water in mine because now my potatoes aren't covered. So I'm going to do that. Now all your potatoes in? When the water boils, when you put in carrots, yes, put the rest of the potatoes in. Got it, got it. I'm learning something. I'm learning something. And the rest of the onions. Now, typically, if you were just using potatoes like for home fries, I usually boil them first so that they get soft. Any root vegetables you want to put in cold water and then put on the stove. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So that was, what inspired you to start slicing up the kitchen? Um, just, you know, teaching myself typical Puerto Rican dishes and wanting to keep the culture alive. 
like you meet so many people and you know i was working and going to school full time so yeah my son just learned how to you know scramble an egg or make rice but a lot of young people don't know typical life skills like i still don't know how to change a tire but i have triple a so <laughs> it's like these are things that people need to learn in life before they're 36. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I actually, um, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, but yeah, we were we were talking to I think my wife and I were talking to a friend of ours about kids learning how to cook, and my son can make yeah. a full breakfast. He could, you know, he can make all types of things. He's still working with my daughter, but you're absolutely right. You learn how to tie, uh, change a tire though. It save you a lot of money. Yeah. You don't even want to know about my car troubles, but that's okay. <laughs> you are soon to be eighteen year old that should know as well. Has he learned? I have what? You have a soon to be eighteen year old. Right, he has not. We're we're so, yeah. we're gradually getting into the me letting go because he's also an only child. He's always been my baby, you know. So I, he's actually learning how to drive. I took him out on the street about two weeks ago. And okay. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Parking lot time is over. I called and got him an instructor. And he's been doing awesome. He's doing amazing. Awesome, awesome. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, um, so I didn't know you. And uh, mm -hmm. really briefly about how we became acquainted. So I do a... Um, and I haven't seen your son yet, so that's a different story, right? Mm -hmm. But I do a yeah. weekly mentoring with young men. And I think you reached out for the information yeah. and started talking. And before you know it, when I saw Chef Cutie, I said, wait a minute, this is the opportunity for us to really sit down and talk mm -hmm. with the chef. Yes. So, question for you. Do you cook every evening? Absolutely not. I did when I was in a relationship, <laughs> let's be clear, <laughs> because there was more people in the house. But right. as far as me and my son, like, I'll make this and this will last two or three days. And then I have salsa Sundays, that'll last two or three days. Okay. So uh, every three, every two to three days, I'll cook. Every two to three days, that's still but a lot. It definitely is harder to cook for two people. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to cook for two people. Especially because I don't like leftovers. Huh. You wouldn't do well in this house. <laughs> so tell us more about like what you do. Do you is this all that you do? Is it the brand? Uh, or is this like a side hustle that you're hoping at some point will be the end all be all? Yeah, so one of the reasons that I moved to Atlanta was because the job market in New York got really hard. I've been in restaurants, I've been in real estate since I was 14. When I was 14, I got my first office job helping out um, as a junior admin to the president of the real estate company. And it's a really big, well-known commercial real estate company, and I enjoyed it, did everything. Um, when I had my son at 19, I just came across this really... I mean, she wasn't terrible, but we, we were bumping heads. Let's say that. Right. Um, and I was like, you know what? This isn't for me. I've always wanted to cook. When I applied to colleges, I got into great cooking schools. But, you know, my dad was like, no, you should have an office job. We don't want you to go to cooking school. That's a hard industry. You know, at that time, it was still a man's world. I was like, all right, fine, cool. Go to school right. for business. So I went to school for business for a year and dropped out. Went back to work at the real estate company. I and then that's when I was so miserable because real estate is for a certain type of people. And um, I decided to go back to cooking school. So I went to cooking school, and while I was there, I got an office job at an amazing company and met this amazing woman who is like still to this day a second mom to me. And she just encouraged me through the school process. So at that time, Chef Cutie Pie started in 2014. So maybe in 2012 is when I started blogging recipes and playing around with stuff. And, and um, 
Yeah, right before I moved down here, I think I was laid off three or four times in a year. And I was like, yeah, this is not, not it. So I moved down to Atlanta. Um, in New York, I was pretty much known for Coquito, which I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, yeah, my wife just put me on for it. It's a, yes. Got to bring out some of that too. I make a vegan coquito and a regular coquito. So coquito is like a Puerto Rican eggnog that people drink around the holidays. So in New York, I was really well known for that. Won a bunch of competitions. That was my side hustle in New York. Um, let's fast forward to now. I had two jobs since I moved down here two years ago. And because of COVID, because I am in the restaurant industry, I was let go in June. Um, thankfully, I was like, you know what, Veronica, you've been laid off enough times. It's now or never. And I jumped in 100%, and this is what I'm doing now. Yo, isn't it, isn't it crazy how, you know, sometimes if we're, if we're, if we sit still long enough, life mm -hmm. will actually force us to do what God called us to do. Exactly. exactly. Oh, let's not start talking about God, because if I tell you the story of how I moved down here, you won't even believe it. I'm well, down here with no job, no car. I, uh -huh. I'm listening. Okay. I went to church the year before, so three years ago. Went to church on watch night service. Went to this amazing church in Harlem. And I felt God telling me to move. And I'm like, all right, cool. I wanted to move, whatever. This is January. So come May, I'm like hearing this in my head, Brian. You have to move. You have to move. You have to move. You have to move. I finally listened, like, let's say June 5th or something like that. I find an apartment. I signed the lease. Mind you, I'm not even in Atlanta yet. This is all from New York. Find an apartment. I signed the lease. My sister drove around the neighborhood. She's like, okay, it's fine. I booked my ticket for July 27th, uh, two years ago. Came on the plane with my suitcase. I was all types of crazy. I was living in Brooklyn in a two-bedroom apartment, which was a good size for New York City, but right. I sold everything in my apartment. Like literally everything in my apartment, I posted pictures on Facebook, I sold it. Came down to Atlanta with one suitcase and that was it. And what's so amazing, and this is why I say God did it for me because it was just following what I felt he wanted me to do. I gave notice on my job. They were like, oh, okay, we really love you. We want you to work from home while you're down there for three months while we find your replacement. So look at that. I was I bought my ticket to come here with only my suitcase. Didn't even have anything to furnish my house yet. Moved down here with my suitcase. My job allowed me to work from home for three months. Now, I was getting worried towards the end of the three months. The three months ended. No lie, the day that that job ended, I got a call for my first job down here for me to wow. start the next week. So started that. And I'm like, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. And sometimes you got to take a leap and just put all your trust in God. Yeah, that's crazy. My mom's asking what's for dinner. You know, I keep putting it up. So you got to pronounce mm -hmm. it for Polo Guisado. Pollo Guisado. Guisado. Polo Guisado. Yep. There you go. Mom, basically, it's chicken and rice. It's what you used to make me. But it's chicken yeah. legs, fries, potatoes, all that good stuff. I didn't put my um my carriage yet, but you wait for it. Mm -hmm. So listen, I want to I want to get a little personal if you don't mind. So you have a soon to be 18-year-old, mm -hmm. right? And so you were a teen mom. Yes. Talk to us about uh mm -hmm. I already know the struggle because my mom was uh she raised me by herself um as her only child. So um, I know I know that life as well, and so I want you to talk to us just about mm -hmm. you know how life was as a nineteen year old mom. Um, I mean, now looking back, thank God for my family. Like, family is everything. You know, growing up, my mom will always say, "Nobody's your friend but your family," and I'm like, "Oh, I don't want to be around my sisters." You know, like I don't like my sisters at that time. <laughs> so um definitely like just thankful for them like like I said I was working full time and going to school full time so I was getting to work at 7 30 in the morning coming home at 11 30 at night after cooking you know cooking school was from 4 to 10 so I was coming home after that 
to my baby asleep, which is why I never worked in the kitchen because then I would have really missed all his young years. You know, like it was hard enough missing the two or three that I did miss. Um, and you know, it's been difficult, but I, I see in him now that he appreciates things that I've done over the years. Because I, I was, I, even though I knew that I was a teen mom, I'm like, I'm proving everybody wrong. I'm going to school, I'm going to work, I'm making money, I'm moving out, I'm doing this. And let me just tell you, if you are a teen mom or anybody in high school listening to this, live with your parents as long as possible. Save as, as much long. money as long as possible. <laughs> as it's long good. as possible. If you it's move now, move early. into your house. Move into <laughs> your first house, okay? Don't move out to be grown and live, live in an apartment and pay rent. And rent goes up way too fast. And I see what's happening in Atlanta the same way that it happened in New York. So it's gentrification is real. It's real. So it's boiling, so I need to put the rest of my ingredients yes. in, right? Yes. So talk to me. You know, you are a single mom. And what does the flavor of love look like in your life, if you don't mind me asking? Flavor of love. So I told you that I don't know how to change a tire, right? So um, I have someone that I can text if I need to know how to change a tire. <laughs> like men are always interested but it's about who wants what I want and right now at the age of 36 like I'm meeting a lot of men that are 40 45 that have 20 year olds or that have 18 year olds and have more than one child that don't want to have any more children or that have bad experiences being married that don't want to ever get married hmm let's talk about it so yeah let's talk about it so yeah i think marriage is a beautiful thing and i think even if you're hurt you should try yeah yeah i mean well yeah one could argue it just depends on what happens you know brothers we we're interesting creatures <laughs> to say the least you know so that well hurt hits different yeah. sometimes for us brothers for some very strange reason but i think it has a lot to do with uh the fact that it takes us a long time to to, to dig that deep and be in touch with certain emotions. So when we are hurt, uh, typically the notion is you, you won't get the opportunity again. So that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same as women. Yeah, I just think it depends on who you are. But, you know, so, so the yeah. jury's still out. I mean, somebody still should, should come and sweep you off your feet and share the empire of cutie pie with you, right? Absolutely. I'm definitely open to that to that happening, not possibility, because it is in my future. I feel like everything else has aligned to get me to where I am, and I have full faith that there is a man out there for me. Nice. <laughs> Only me. <laughs> Let's be cool yeah. all the way clear. <laughs> yeah. So, so will you? Is, are you tied to the Atlanta area now, or could something happen where you could pick back up and go? to New York or move somewhere else? Or are you like, are you planning? Um, I really like Atlanta. I would never move back to New York. Tickets from yeah. here to New York are very cheap. Um, the middle sister still lives in New York. So I the have middle. nowhere to stay. My my son really misses New York, but um, yeah, we're, we're planted here at least for the next year. I'm definitely, really open to moving to another state like this I love this life like I was born to you know my one of my college friends texted me yesterday and she's like you know it's so funny that you're doing this because I remember in college when you were saying like you would happily just be home cooking and be a housewife like that is still my dream I can run chef cutie pie and be a housewife so <laughs> Like, I want to be in my garden gardening. I want to be baking cookies. I want to go meet my kids coming off the bus. Like, I love that. Like, I, the sense of family is everything. So so talk to me about, let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit, right? So are you an anomaly among some of your girlfriends, or do you find that that is, because a lot of, of course, I do the brothers run, so I'm around a lot of brothers all the time. And so mm -hmm. I can't say that, 
the women that I I know, all of them would agree, or all of them are are fully bought into the, the notion of uh, I guess that traditional sense of being home and taking care yeah. of the kids and gardening and doing all the things that some of us only saw on TV. So talk to us about what that looks like. Uh, you know, like with, with your girlfriends, are you the only one that's talking like that or are or oh, women? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like <laughs> But let me tell you, like, all of my friends love me because they, I was always the mom in the group. Like, if we went to the movies, I had, you know, the hand wipes, the sanitizer. I had little snacks in my bag anytime we went anywhere. Like, I was always the mom, you know? So, um, but, I mean, it all depends on what you want out of your life. Like, I have uh, your wife that I said looks exactly like my friend's wife. They are a lesbian couple. They don't want kids. They're okay never having kids. Mm -hmm. And they're happy, you know, like, so it just depends on what you want out of life. Like, yeah, I enjoy having my son. And I know there's people that don't want kids. I know there's people that don't even want a house, you know, like it's not the, the American dream isn't the, doesn't look the same for everyone. And that's totally okay. Like, yeah, we'll get, we'll go into back and forth um, among friends about, you know, I don't know how you could ever be a housewife. And I'm like, I enjoy doing these things, you know? If you don't enjoy them, then your partner should enjoy what you enjoy. Hmm. Because that's the best way to get along in my mind. Or, you know, and tell me, because you're married and you ha are among other married people, but I think your partner should strengthen your weaknesses. Like, if my husband doesn't know how to cook, that's cool, because I know how to cook. Or, you know... Hopefully he, well, no, he will know how to change his tire. So then that will be taken care of, you know? <laughs> you said that he will know how to change the tire. Oh, he absolutely has to. Let me tell you. So this is one of the things, but this is like the funny thing too, because we're talking about all of these like super feminine things. And um, my dad was a handyman, a locksmith, like literally everything. You, my, and Growing what? up, he was always fixing and painting. Yes, yes, <laughs> I am daddy's girl. So well, growing up, I was always wife. right next to him. I don't know if she would call herself daddy's girl, but I know for a fact I had pretty huge shoes to fill. Um, I mean, yeah, her dad is her. her thank God. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes you know. It's funny. That's what me and my sister say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's a good now thing. looking back at it. Yeah, like we're like, you know what? Maybe we're single because my dad did everything, and by everything, I don't mean cooking, cleaning, fixing. I mean, he could cook. You know, I remember Fridays, my dad would pick us up from school and boil in a soft boil an egg and give us crackers. And it's like, I can right. smell it right now, just thinking about it, you know? But I was always right by his side. He's like, I need a screwdriver, I pass it. Phillips head or flathead, you know? So yeah. everything that I've ever needed done in my apartment, I do myself. So it's, huh. I'm one of those women like, yeah, I don't need a man. But it would be amazing to not have to change a light bulb or screw my cabinets tighter when they're not screwed in correctly, you know? Like, hey, guess Guess what? I hate to Those break it to you. Those are the things that I don't want to do. I hate to break it to you, but you have a seventeen-year-old, so a lot of that stuff he can do. Yes. All right? Very true. Very true. So it's funny that we're having this conversation because I, I feel like you know people have perceptions of married life. You know, could be people who are not yeah. married. And so I like to say mm -hmm. there's a lot of layers to it, right? So I know you know we're talking about. Um, you know, women and their fathers and the one thing i will say is like mm -hmm. i've gotten caught up in this notion of like you know well needing needing a cookie to you know over something that's like basic for my wife like my wife is like look you don't get a cookie for that like that i don't know all i know is the man who shows up and he's there and he provides and all of that but because mm -hmm. i didn't really grow up with that for me, I felt like I was Superman. I was doing everything that I didn't see growing up. But for my wife was like, I get it, but I, are you talking about that? Or like, 
you know, not reading or not doing all these things. So that's one part of it. But another part is recently started talking about not her, but me. I told her that I wanted a second marriage. How do you feel about that? That so you want what? A second marriage. What does that mean? Like renewing your vow? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your wife's face right now. Because no, 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 I can't talk to her again. <laughs> no, so let me, let me explain. I was yeah. second married within my first marriage, mm -hmm. right? Oh, my wife said, watch the food. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Look, yes. it's boiling like crazy, too. So here's the thing. I think that sometimes in marriages, you get so comfortable. And when we got married, when I was like 25, she was like 24. So for me, we're not even the same people. That's very true. We're not the same people. So at the end of the day, I think most times I'm talking to a lot of my brothers who have gotten divorces. Uh, they're mm -hmm. on their second, third marriages. They're like, oh, things are beautiful. But it, mm -hmm. look at what it's what it up, right? Because you're not the same person so you grow into a different person. So my thinking is when you're in the marriage, at least we can be conscious enough to say, you know what? Why don't we recalibrate and work on our second marriage? We don't have to do a pop and but but yeah. we definitely like check in because if I thought she liked 20 years ago, you probably don't like it no more. Yeah. Well, this is why, and you know, again, I'm not married. My longest relationship was probably three and a half years. But I think it's very important to keep dating. You know, like, it's very easy once you're in a relationship, once you're comfortable to just be and not, you know, take that time out to continue getting to know the person that you're with. So do you and your wife have date night? See, now you can't start trouble. <laughs> See, I brought you on the show and then you can't start trouble. Oh, uh, so <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, you asking one question, but I'm going to come back with the real question. All right, so how all right, are you so going to get a second marriage if you're... Listen, let me say something to you, Chef. Uh, let me say uh, this is my show, and what you're not going to do is come in here and start in trouble. That's what you're not going to do. Um, so look, oh, I hear her. <laughs> we, everybody hears her. She has no regard for the fact that I'm on a show. Everybody hears her. Let's be clear. She, loves, she doesn't. Uh, she, it's, I love it's, it. It's, well, you love it. It's low key disrespectful. Um, but what I'm going to say, right, is. I used to, you see, I'm still reaching back 10 years ago. I used to be the king at date night. I'm talking about, my wife can tell you about some dates that will knock your socks off. I slowed down a little bit, but I'm old. My bones are, you know, older. So I, I can't do as much as I wanted to do, right? Um, okay. But yes, we we talk about the recalibration. Um, we did talk about date night and the need for date night. But I, 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 I want to challenge you on something. Because mm -hmm. one thing I learned in life, right? And I don't want you to do this when you find your forever, mm -hmm. right? When you find the person that you're going to do life with, I want you to be straight mm -hmm. with this, right? Date night doesn't mean it's the brothers. Come on, somebody. It doesn't mean it's just the brothers. Date night bo go both ways. I'm listening. Yes. Yes. You hear that? The, no, no, no. The only thing that I have to say <laughs> about that <laughs> is that in my mind, again, you know, my happy housewife life, the man is in charge of leading my family and initiating. So if he sets the tone, like, babe, we're going to have date night once a month. Because I've been in this situation, like, yeah, I put on makeup when I do my lives. I have on makeup right now. I have on lipstick. I'm, I'm a jeans and sneakers kind of, unless I'm making, like, a, an appearance. So I was in a relationship, and... He was like, oh, you never get dressed up. I'm like, well, you don't take me nowhere. So I'm not going to wear makeup to walk around the house. So if you I, take the initiative, I, I think it definitely would set the tone and change. Here you How's go. How's your chicken looking? My chicken looks good. It's just boiling right now. Could it be, could it look any different? Yeah. The, um, let me see if I can show this over here. Yeah. Let me get one of my... Um, Well, mine's still bleeding, probably. So the chicken me. should 
the, the chicken should be getting very tender. The skin might have fallen off. That's okay. But it's, it should be looking more stewy. And brown. Let me get a little closer. I don't think you browned your chicken enough. But it's fine. It will still taste good. Mm. It, it, it'll still taste good. <laughs> You're so encouraging. So let's see. Let's see. Here's here's what this one's looking like right now. Ooh, mine don't look like that. Wait a minute. So, so, but it's when the water's gonna boil down. Oh, you ready to see what mine look like? Yes, the water's gonna boil down. Let's see. Yeah, I see a lot of water. Everything can be fixed, especially when there's a lot of water. It's fine. That's fine. Okay. You put all your potatoes and carrots in there. I did. Everything is okay. Made a mess. Everything's good. So we're good. Just let it. <laughs> I'm gonna let, let it rock out. This is what I do. You know. Yeah. I'm gonna step extraordinary up in this joint. Yeah. Don't let nobody be different. <laughs> so look. I got a few questions for you. You ready? It's that time of the ready. show where I ask you a few questions, and I don't know if anybody from the <laughs> Oh man, my wife is going there. <laughs> you see these comments? My mom always used to say, "A watch no, pot never boils." No, I'm too far. Oh, okay, it's right. cool. I'm reading. That's very true. Uh, my mom said cast iron works better. She's a cast iron. Everything is cast iron. You say, hey, mom, can I get a? Can I get some eggs? Okay, let me get, get the cast iron. <laughs> Everything is cast iron. That's Everything got a little flavor. black. That's, that's, yes, that's what has that flavor. <laughs> yeah, call it what you want. It's good. That's all I know. So look, um, I'll ask a few questions of you, and I want to be a good steward over your time. Um. Mm -hmm. And so I, some are fun, some are just regular, but I want you to take it however you, however you read the question, I want you just to go there, okay? Okay. So think one thing you can't live without. One thing that I can't live without, cake. Yeah. Cake is like my favorite. Dessert, cake. period. Yes. Desserts. <laughs> but I don't see that, I don't see that on your website. You're right, because I do not bake. <laughs> Because if I baked, I'd really be like 500 pounds. <laughs> so I do not bake. That is not my specialty. I actually made tres leches cake today, but I do not bake it generally. So next question. Think of your worst heartbreak and tell us what lesson you learned. Um, Definitely not to fall in love with potential that I see in someone else that they don't see in themselves. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. That is good. So wait, yeah. you said don't fall in love with potential with mm -hmm. someone and something that you see in them, but they don't see in themselves. Yes. Oh, I just, I'm just hoping yeah. everybody can count like this. That's good. That's good. You know, to be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a while, right? And maybe I should, that's probably a problem. I could be my wife, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's good. I would imagine that we often see things in other people that they don't see themselves. And if you fall in love with that. Absolutely. You, ooh, that's yeah. good. I mean, my friends tell me all the time that I wear, I wear rose colored glasses because I'm such a positive person that that actually happened to me twice. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> wow. I like that. I'm sitting with it a little bit. All right. So <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll just move on. What do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to retire doing? I don't want to assume that it's cooking. Yeah. So my dream is a little hole in the wall. I don't know if you've been to New York or for the people watching that haven't been to New York or Puerto Rico. Um, a Gucci Frito spot is like a little greasy diner hole in the wall that sells frituras, which are fried, basically like appetizers. That's my dream, is to own a Gucci Frito. Like be that old lady in the restaurant in the corner that knows all the kids, that the kids come after school 
you know, bringing back that sense of community that I feel we don't have anymore in areas like in New York. And I honestly haven't found it here either, even though it's a little bit smaller. Huh, that's interesting. So that's I don't think really. a lot of people realize uh, <laughs> something really cool about Puerto Rico. And I, like when you think of you know, countries and things of that nature, like you don't, if you're born in Puerto Rico, you're a U.S. citizen, aren't you? Yes, you are. Through um, So it is a commonwealth. It's not a state, which means that Puerto okay. Rico cannot vote for president. They can only vote for their governor. Right. But you can come back. So if you live in Puerto Rico or born in Puerto Rico, you can actually come over here with no problem. Yes. And we you have U.S. dollars. Like, it's the same money here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, for those who've never, never been, you know, they make a lot of assumptions for sure. Yeah. So it's not far fetched for your goal to come to fruition. That's my point. No. Right now, I, I'm like overjoyed that I finally took the leap and I'm doing this 100%. Because I think I've always yeah. been hesitant. But also, what I realized in the past like month, is that no matter what has happened to me, I overcame it. Like there were days where I was too proud to ask my parents for money if me and my son didn't have something to eat. And that's how my coconut guava glaze that I saw on my website, that's how that came about. I opened the refrigerator. Yes, it's like a barbecue sauce, it's amazing. And I opened the fridge one day, I had guava, I had coconut flakes and I had pancake mix. So we had pancakes with coconut and guava. <laughs> And that was our dinner. And it's like out of the most dire situation came one of the best things that I've created. So it's like, I know that, especially how far God has brought me in my life, that I will always make it regardless. Like if I, if for some reason I can't do this full time, then so be it. But it's something that I will always strive to achieve. Hmm. Oh, my That's wife's a big one. <laughs> I know. I said, <laughs> meaning, take time to relearn your spouse because after being with them for so long, you change, and so do they. So, making sure that you know them all over again will allow you to have a second marriage experience within your first marriage. Many people say second marriages are better due to learning from their mistakes and being more mature and ready in their second marriage. So, I don't see what my wife said that I didn't say because I said mm -hmm. that. Right? I said that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I know what side you on. That's why I still should be y'all. I know what side you on. <laughs> so next question. No, but you see, you're on the same page. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what are you walking out of quarantine with that you didn't walk in? Um what am I walking out of quarantine with that I didn't have before? Um, a sense of calm. Um, I, again, since 19, I hit the road running and I haven't stopped. So this has been a recharge time for me. And it's funny because now I can look back and say that about quarantine, but mm -hmm. when everything in Atlanta shut down. I was working 14 hours at the restaurant because only management was there. We had to let go of all the staff. So I was still running when quarantine started in Atlanta. And, you know, I didn't have a chance to stop because that's all I ever knew how to do was work harder, work harder, make sure the people, you know, your boss likes you, make sure that the owners like you. Like it was a lot of that. So this time that I have gone into quarantine as everyone else has seen it, which is being home, I took the time to regroup, to rest, because I think a lot of time, especially women, we're so busy doing that we don't take time to rest. And now mm. I'm here and I probably haven't, you know, yesterday I went to get a facial and I'm like, who does self-care days that's an entrepreneur? Because I have like a self-care hour now that I've done this 100%. But it's my time now, and it definitely feels different working the 14 hours for Chef Cutie Pie than for the man. <laughs> Yo, I want to just stay there for a minute. Like, it's nothing like working for yourself. Like, I, I mean, it, it, 
even though it's stressful, I would imagine mm-hmm. that it's nothing like working for yourself. And so our point of contention sometimes in the house is, you know, she's she visually because of quarantine you now, and, and thank God, because it's a blessing to have a job to say, look, just don't come mm-hmm. back, just keep working from home. Right. Um, but now we see how each other moves throughout the day. Yeah. So she sees me doing calls that I'm having and mm-hmm. right. And so but she also sees how I effortlessly transition from my nine to five to my five and nine. Mm-hmm. And it's that stress hits different, right? Because I would mm-hmm. love to be working nine to five just for the brothers brunch. But not right. all of us have luxury. Yes. But I think especially now, like I was reading some many things that say that work hours working from home during quarantine you're stretching your hours and my brain is racing right now because i have so many things that i want to say but i think you have to honor yourself and if you were only working nine to five in the office only work nine to five now like you have to set your own boundaries and you have to make sure that people respect them so go over your employee handbook or whatever and be like, these are my hours, this is what I'm gonna work. And I think that's something as a people, we do need to be more accustomed to doing because you don't wanna give these people free time because time is money. Especially when it's interfering, you know, in your home life and your time with your kids, like everyone needs to get away. You know, no one on my timeline is ever on my side. And I don't understand that, but um, you know, I, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> You said you wanted to do brothers brunch full time. That was that was a comment from the audience. I apologize. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was like, what? <laughs> I want to ask you a question though. Because it seems like you know, um, when you think of fortitude, you think about resilience, and you think about you know being a teen mom and having to overcome obstacles. And we heard your story about you know what you left uh, one state with and how you traveled and how favor, like God had favor over your life. Just gonna put that out there like that. That's real funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was really good. Now I'm getting hungry. I'm ready. <laughs> getting there though, but you see that rice? It looked good. The rice, the rice is, is cool. Awesome. It's good. Um, <laughs> I want to know like who's strong for the strong. Like who is strong? Like where where do you get your strength from when it's all said and done? Like you you seem to make sure that you don't fall apart, even mm-hmm. with all the hell that probably goes on in life. You know, who's strong for you? Um, Again, my parents. Like, my dad was always the man's man, but he was gentle with us. Like, it was to the point, like, I to this day, I can't even think of a time when my dad disciplined me, but I never wanted to let him down. I always respected him. And then my mom, because the t- at the time that they were, you know, in Puerto Rico, they met in New York, by the way. They lived, like, less than a mile away from each other in Puerto Rico, but they went in New York, which is crazy. But, um, you know, my mom is Afro-Latina, which is another term that has just re- recently come to um, come about for Latin people that look black. Like my mom is dark skin, my dad's fair skin. I favor my dad more. Um, but if you look at them, you would see an interracial couple, quote unquote, Again, at the time that they were together, the woman of the house shouldn't work or whatever. My mother has always worked. My mother has always taken care of home. Um, My mother has always done all of that. And at the same time, my dad played baseball until four years ago. Every Saturday, we will all be in Central Park lugging all our stuff up there to watch my dad play baseball. So it's like my mom always maintained the sense of family. She was always you know, the disciplinarian, like my sister's her favorite because they look alike. So, right. um, <laughs> you know, she, like we just always had that sense of family and always had parents that would do anything for us. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So, thank you for answering that. Next question is, who is your favorite human on the planet? Outside of your already said it, but <laughs> right. So it would be like my son and my dad. Um, of course, my dad. Um, like I said, like he's just awesome. Like I saw a post on Facebook the other day, and it said your husband, 
and your father got into an argument and your father tells you sit down, your husband tells you to go wait in the car, what are you doing? And I was like, what? Yo, How you going to wait? Oh, am I? You already know the answer to that. You can get you behind the car. Uh, I said, <laughs> I said, my husband would not be, ar any man that is for me would not be arguing with my father. So therefore I'm taking a seat. <laughs> you know, that but, isn't fair at all. Person, it's not. It's not for anybody one, in the situation. But one would argue that, you know, the Bible says you have to leave and cleave. So, you know, you're in you're technically your home, you know, your peace, yes. your your peace, we talk about peace, mm -hmm. and your spouse is home. So there there would have to be a reason that I asked, I asked yes. politely. For you to go sit in the car. And so if I ask politely for you to go sit in the car, right? So I, so, so so dad and I can have a man to man conversation, I'm sure you would be okay with that. Yeah. Now, I mean you, you you phrased that very well there. You phrased that very well. Look, I'm hearing all types of well crunch though. Because <laughs> you you're hearing my teeth clench. That's what you are. <laughs> But uh, I think you're, um, the scenario that you put it in is very fair and is very true. Yes, you're telling your wife to go sit in the car while you have an adult grown man conversation with her father. I can respect that. That's similar to have a seat in the living room. Let me finish this up. That's, that's a different, that's, a, that's an okay context. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you don't really believe that, but it's it's okay. Um, <laughs> so I want to know what's the best advice anyone has ever given you. Before Drake had YOLO, you only live once. My mom would always say that. Now oh. let's 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 clarify. We weren't out running the streets all types of, of night or whatever. But anytime I would be like, or my sisters, you know, like, oh, this came up, you know, especially my sister Sandra. My sister Sandra, the one in fashion, has like traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. And she'd be like, oh, hey, I got this job in France to plan a fashion show for two weeks. So can I go? And my mom would be like, well, I guess so, you know, but she would, she would be like, you only live once. That's how she would end that conversation. And it's well, true, you do only live once and opportunities won't always present themselves a second time. I love that. You only live, got it. So that's your theme song, apparently. Yeah. Time, time for this question, so, which means that we're gonna be ending pretty soon and whether my food is done or not, it's gonna go in a picture. <laughs> what if, my wife said, mm-mm. I gotta get the studio audience. Every other talk show, they, they do their thing with no audience, right? They just talk to the screen. I, I might have to send your wife my address and be like, just come over while that chicken finishes over here, you know? <laughs> this is gonna be good. I'm promise it's gonna be good because that meat is falling off. Me. You wanna know why? Because I watch for meat. So look, what are your questions for me? <laughs> what um, questions do you have for me? So, I mean, I, how, I, I don't know how old your son is. He looks like an early teenager, like 13, 14. He's 14. Oh, okay. So what would your advice be to mothers of teen boys? Let me let my cook my chicken cook for a little bit. I'm going to come right over there. I got, I got something for you. Mm -hmm. What would my advice be for mothers of teen boys? Yes. I would, I would venture to say, now, are you saying mothers in general or are you saying uh, single moms or does it matter? I think the same would apply to both, but, but whichever, if you want to differentiate, you can. Um, uh, funny. Um, yeah, so I would say that grace is, is absolutely necessary. Um, um, I would also say seek first to understand and to be understood. I think oftentimes uh, moms have this 
they have a certain way of parenting that are, that's very different than dads. Uh, it's almost, and I'm generalizing here, so don't 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 get me. But it's mm -hmm. almost like the the level of authority is on ten because it would seems like they're over compensating for like so the screen the screen the assertiveness is all it's everything that I probably would do just very differently because as far as I'm concerned if I say something you know I said it right and so whereas my wife she everything she says even if it means wash the dishes she's saying it with her chest I need you to wash these dishes and it's like yeah. okay who <laughs> wash the dishes right <laughs> But I'm saying my best because I need you to be And so I say grace also because our boys are bigger than what they used to be, right? So my son is 14. And so yeah. when he makes a face or he stands straight up, he's not he's not um he's not attacking you or or you know, he's not uh he's not being mm -hmm. that the bravado is not there. He just literally can't help sometimes being cowering over his mom. And I think oftentimes because I lived this life with a mother, right, who uh, was raising as a single parent, you know, she thought that she had to like knock me to my knees because she was like, "You're not gonna stand over me. You're not. You're not. Well, you stand up. I'm just standing up. I'm not. Like, I don't want to fight. I don't want no trouble. Like, look, I don't want no trouble. You punch me in my chest. What you doing that for? Like, it's all good. Um, I also I, I think that with with, with guys uh, emotionally. Women are dealing with uh, mostly unstable men because they haven't really. I think that has a lot to do with how they were parented. Um, it's not my. It's, mm -hmm. I'm just no judgment, but I think oftentimes mm -hmm. with mothers, um, you gotta realize that because a boy might cry or a boy might, uh, you know, have some level of emotions, you gotta know how to how to, how to tackle that, <laughs> you know. And I think this for yeah. parents in general. You know it's okay to cry. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to mm -hmm. get it. You're going to tell me why you're crying. You're going to explain to me. You're going to explain those emotions because what happens is, as brothers, we tend to suffer in silence because what, what we hear is "man up" or you know what other yeah. people society thinks men should be, you know, emotionally. And what that means is that we tend to start to hide things and hide our emotions. And every time something happens to us that's jarring, we suck it up, right? And so sucking it up is Point becomes explosive, particularly when we're in relationships. Wow. Felt like you were talking right to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's hard. It, it's definitely hard. Um, okay. Next question. So, um, what do you think has made your marriage last so long? Uh, the same thing that I said you should uh, extend to your son, Grace. Grace. Yes, hmm. absolutely. I think that uh, I think that we're not built like our the generations before at all. Yeah. I think you know, and I've never said it publicly. So congratulations. I think mm -hmm. my father-in-law and mother-in-law had everything to do with um, why my wife is remotely the way she is. In terms of situativeness, in terms of you know fighting, you know even when all she has is the prayer, you know like the only thing she has is God. That's the only strand left <laughs> is God, right? And so when the chips are down, I think she, you know, and it's, it's outside of it's so much deeper than this um, the optics of marriage and what it looks like husband and wife and white picket fence. We have all of that, right? Um, she doesn't care about any of that. What, what she cares about is family, right? So yeah. family we're fighting for, but that's 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 the roughest. I would say, you know, marriage is so hard sometimes that you mm -hmm. you get stuck and it's so noisy. You have friends and you have family and you have people that all have opinions. I think it mm -hmm. takes a strong person to be able to block out all of the noise and completely dig to a level where you have that peace that solitude and you're talking to god and you and you really are are at a point where you're just going to listen to whatever god tells you to do um yes. that's that's one part of it um i also just think that you know 
16 years is a is a is a long time for our generation. But like I, yeah. I preference it all back in the day, it that's what they did. They they stayed together right. no matter what, right? And and so we what we're committed to doing is not just staying, right? Mm-hmm. Not just being here. At the end of the day, the kids are gonna leave at some point. We looking at each other like crazy, like right. Right. you wanna do, I don't know what you wanna do. Yeah. So you're gonna have one, to get to know each other all over again. Like what? <laughs> see, and the thing is, is like so when when two people and I'm not a relationship guru by any means, I just mm-hmm. have life that, that teaches me. But what I will say is, you know, two people come to a relationship with different scripts in life. So my script was very different than hers, and it doesn't make my script bad. Like my mom was married three times. Um, mm-hmm. She's probably to this to date one of the most phenomenal women that I've ever met in my life. My mom. That's mm-hmm. that's my mom, right? And so at the end of the day, my script was very different. It was like, look, you know, I ain't got to deal with like if it, if the road gets tough, I'm getting going. Like I ain't got to deal with all of that. So I had a very I had quit built in my spirit. My wife didn't. She didn't know what that looked like. It was like, wait. You're storming out the house. Where they do that at? I I don't I don't know I don't know when to fuck that. Like and so that life wasn't that life wasn't her. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I learned very quickly that you know it was that I I'm learning that you know if there's tears left, right. you got if there's if there's mm-hmm. some tears left, right? You got a chance. And and and, I, and who am I to take advantage of that, right? Because I may not have another chance, you know, the life right. out. Um, so what I will say is being in a marriage is not about finding the right person, it's about being the right person. And I think at some point mm. you get to, you get to a point where you're like you're tired of playing games and you just you just want to be a good person. And so temptation is always gonna be there. Um, stupid stuff is always gonna be there, and you just gotta realize like is it worth it? Because guess what? Nobody can stop you from it. Nobody. Like absolutely and, right. So this trust thing is real. You either lose it or you don't. But yeah. staying together is is really is really a choice. And so we had these conversations where I feel like men need respect. You might say, well, I think women need love. Well, what do you mean? Like, how do I don't love you? You got a house for your, your head. I work hard. I do this. I do. I pay the bill. But what does that mean, right? Like, if I'm lacking intimacy, right? So this every time you turn around, there's something else that I gotta level up on. But it's vice versa. And so communication is key. Without it, apart. If, if we don't communicate and say, "Look, bruh, it ain't," you got to do more. My wife, I'll never forget, and I'll, I'll and I'll finish this question. Right, I'll never forget one day, and I think this was year fourteen of our marriage. She um, she wrote something in a text, and I swear, if I print the text out, it's probably like four pages. But it was entitled. It was entitled, and I'll never forget this. I desire more. It, it like it ripped me to shreds because it was her. One, my wife. It'd be the first to tell you, text is not talking. Like that's not communication for me. <laughs> like you will look me in my eyes and we will have a conversation. So for my wife to get to a point where she felt like the only way for me to hear her, catch that. Is to write that mm-hmm. level of emotion in text, and for it to be so profound, right? Like it was like I could print this out and it could be a book or a blog, mm-hmm. but like I did not like anything. I didn't like the person that that wh- whoever that was. I didn't like who he was. So I think we all have to do our our own work mm-hmm. in order for a marriage to work. Mm-hmm. What question do you have? My food is done. Wow, wow. Is it? Let's see, let's see. Huh? I'm about to show you. Let's see it. Okay. Um. So, is there anything in life you regret? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Anything in life that I regret? Um... You know, I don't think I'm one of those people that can say they don't live with regrets because I do have some regrets. Um, Mm -hmm. I would venture to say, voila, it's my food. Oh, looking good, looking good. 
So we got it those really uh, good. The carrots and uh, you know, chicken. Hey, listen, I told you I do my thing. I I didn't brown my I didn't brown my meat like I should have, but it still is good. And I'm gonna keep it on for a little bit. So yeah, I don't um I don't necessarily live with uh with regrets, but I will say that um I would have, if I had to do it all over again, I would have proposed to my wife differently. Okay. I know well, that's not. you did that for the second marriage, I'm not going to ask you how you did it or how you wanted to, but that sounds like a great thing to do for the second marriage in here. Yeah, I've had some epic dates and epic, you know. I've done some epic things, but that's the one thing that I would like to do over if I could. Okay. That's good. It's not even a bad regret. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, that's I mean, great. I got some regrets, but it ain't for the lives. <laughs> Thank you so much for today. Of course. Thank you for having me. And yeah, no, I really do need to drop off some spices for you guys. So. Let me know when I can do that, and I'll definitely bring them by next week. How are you going to do that when you're in Atlanta? Aren't you in Atlanta? Nope. Ah, you're see, in... this is you did that. Oh, you're right. So, to where me, are you I guys? You, but you don't know all about me. Guess where I live? I believe I, I heard Texas somewhere. Nope. No. I live in Delaware. In Delaware? Why did I think Texas from one of your videos? Okay. All right, well, I'll mail you some. <laughs> you know what? Don't even do that. I have your website. I'm going to support you. Awesome. Thank you. I'll just try to buy your, um, buy your seasoning. I'm excited to do it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we're we shifting. Um, we're shifting in terms of how we spend. So we definitely want to uh, support yeah. Uh, our people. And so I thank you so much. Uh, it's fun I said, what's up, man? Tell him to hop on on Wednesday for the mentoring. Yes. Um, now I'm going to just do it and make him sit there. I'm going to do that. See, that's, see, that's what I'm doing. Why? <laughs> He's 17. Because he has said that he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't find interest. But you don't know if you're interested if you didn't try it. Just like you don't know food unless you try it. If you try it once and you say, I don't like it, fine. Get on one Zoom. If you don't like it, you don't need to go back. So why do you want it? <laughs> because I think it'll be, I think you guys cover interesting topics. And I think it'll just be him hearing and seeing people talk that are different from his circle right now. I think it'll be a great opportunity for him to get out there without literally being outside. I hear you. I hear you. Listen, I'm glad that we connected. Um, it was absolutely yeah. organic. You were reaching out because of the mentor um, the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what a difference. A couple of weeks later, you met my wife. Uh, yeah. We're one family. You live in Delaware, and you live in Atlanta. What's the big awesome. deal? We will support <laughs> you. Uh, if you haven't already, check out Chef Beauty Pie, right? Yeah. You got to check her out, um, folks. We, um, here's her information today. Actually, we made to pronounce it. Boiled ghee style. Yes. And so this is a variation of uh, a meal that mom used to make when I was little. You know, she used to make chicken and stew chicken and rice. And basically, we just Latinized it, right? Yeah. So today was awesome. Check her out on IG at Chef Cutie Pie, at Chef Cutie Pie, and make sure you go to her website, which is www.chefcutiepie.com. She has all of the flavors. All of the flavors. So there's no need to go to Goya. There's no need to do any of that because she mixes and mingles and she makes it happen. So please support her today. I appreciate you so much. We're going to let you go. And Thank you. Have a great night. Buen provecho. That's how you say bon appetit in Spanish. And enjoy. Bon appetit. My wife says, I'll text you. I can't taste it until the show is done. Listen, I know my food. All right. Have a good one. You too. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. Uh, man, I just cooked the whole meal and it actually tastes really good. The one thing I would do differently is I would sear my meat 
a little more uh, before I actually um, start adding all the other ingredients. But I think I did pretty good. Today was a good day. Um, you know, all things considered, we took the whole meal and, you know, it only took us an hour and a half. It took me an hour and a half. She was like done within the first 40 minutes. But look, I appreciate you all today. Um, one thing I will say is I don't care who you are. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the, uh, the support and it will never be forgotten. Have a good one.